Well, let's speak now to the editor of The New Yorker magazine, who's also written a biography of Muhammad Ali, David Remnick. David, welcome to BBC News. Thanks for being with us today. I was very struck by the essay you've written for The New Yorker in the wake of Muhammad Ali's death, and, and two things in particular. One, first of all, this question of race. How did Muhammad Ali's views evolve on that subject? Well, as, as was mentioned before, he grew up in Louisville, which was a completely segregated Jim Crow city. It wasn't necessarily as bad as Mississippi or Alabama, but Kentucky was a southern and is a southern uh, place. And, and he grew up seeing people denied access to all kinds of facilities. His mother worked cleaning toilets and floors for white people. His father was uh, a kind of frustrated sign painter who wanted to be an artist. He saw that and Boxing was really his only avenue. He, he was not a great student at all. Uh, boxing was what he could do. It was, he, it, and he turned it from being uh, a way to get revenge for a bicycle being stolen when he was 12 years old to becoming the most famous person on earth. And one who uh, did not shy away from having views that at the time, for some in the United States, were pretty controversial, not least in 68, his call for the separation of the races. Well, I think you have to remember what an enormous source of pride he was in the middle of the civil rights movement and then the black power movement. Earlier black heavyweight champions were either reviled for, their, for getting too far ahead of themselves, like Jack Johnson, who behaved in a way that would have gotten him lynched had he not been champion, and Joe Lewis, who followed the instructions of his handlers to behave with incredible courtesy so that he wouldn't alienate white America. And along comes this guy, Cassius Clay, who shocks the world by winning the title and then insisting that you call him Muhammad Ali, and he's joined a, a separatist religion and cult called the Nation of Islam. This was a shock to the racial order as well as the popular culture of the United States. Did his views evolve on that? Absolutely. He... I, he First of all, he was very close friends for a while with Malcolm X, but then repudiated Malcolm X because the Nation of Islam had broken with, with Malcolm. Then he broke with, with the Nation of Islam because he no longer saw the sense in its kind of esoteric uh, views and its separatism, and he became a mainstream Muslim. I think a lot of the uh, more radical and separatist rhetoric of his younger days uh, were left far behind by the mid and late 70s. Let me ask you finally, very briefly, how would you summarize Muhammad Ali? I think he was not only the greatest athlete of the 20th century, the greatest global athlete of the 20th century, but a key figure in terms of resistance to um, uh, the war in Vietnam and in the racial history of that turbulent decade of the 1960s. He was important beyond any... Um, person in, in athletics or even in popular culture for his time. He was an amazing, lasting, historical figure, not merely an athlete. David Remnick, editor of the New Yorker magazine. We're most grateful to you for joining us here on BBC News. Thanks very much for that, Thank David you. Remnick, who is a biographer of Muhammad Ali. And uh, you can find his fascinating essay on Ali's impact, both culturally and as a sports uh, hero on uh, the New Yorker's website right now.